Hi! Welcome again to a new video of mine. Today I would like to talk about uh, certain kind of people that I've come across lately. And when I say lately, I mean that it's only very recently that I started to understand actually what's happening. Especially this morning, I finally got it like this. <clears throat> These people I'm talking about are those who are very much in the mind, who are very intelligent, very analytic, and they analyze everything. It's, it's their thing. It's what they love to do, it's what they enjoy. And I believe in many cases more than that. It has become the only way of being able to cope with things. Like something is happening, I need to fully understand it. So I need to dissect it in the smallest possible pieces uh, so that I understand what's going on. Otherwise, I cannot accept it. Otherwise, they do not feel safe. Uh, they cannot feel comfortable. So, when you are like this, and you have a problem that you cannot solve, it becomes really hard. When I explain why. <coughs> when I'm talking about problems, I mean emotional problems, like fears, blockages, anything that's happening here and not here. And what I've realized is that for example, if somebody has a fear and really wants to overcome it and because the fear is really bothering that person, then he's looking for solutions. So he reads a lot, watches videos, um, goes to seminars, conferences, even to workshops and private sessions. And then every time <clears throat> there's a solution, that person takes, it so, takes the solution and says, looking at it, is this a solution? Is, is this the one that will help me? Okay, let's dissect it. I need to understand it to make sure this one is a good thing. And before I say what's happening after this, <coughs> I'll give you an example. Let's say you would love to have a car. So I say, okay, I can give you a car. But then for you to make sure that a car is okay, you need to completely understand it and dissect it. And I know this about you, but you would not think about this for a car, but I know you, you, you always dissect everything. So I would come to you one day and say, okay, the car is outside, it's up front. So you step out of the building and you see a mountain of metal, glass, rubber, plastic, light bulbs, um, a jerry can of fuel, and you'll be like, what's this? You said you would get me a car. Well, I know you want to understand every piece and bit and know everything about the car. So I already took it apart for you. So you can look at every piece by itself. Congratulations, here are the keys. Bye. But then you had planned to go somewhere and there's no way you can get to the airport in time with a mountain of rubbish because that's what it is at the end it's a mountain of a lot of pieces who as pieces they can do nothing for you there's nothing you can do with this mountain of junk even if somebody would be a real good engineer he would still have trouble getting the whole thing together and getting it to work so this is 
what these people do. So, me as a coach, if I would come to such a person, would come with a solution, and the client would immediately be like, hmm? ah, wait, hold, hold it there. <laughs> Taking the whole thing apart, and I start looking, yeah, and this part, uh, oh yeah, this is similar to that theory, and this is similar to that method, and this is similar. I'm like, okay. Have fun dissecting. I personally will not waste my time because for me it's time wasting when I try to work with somebody like this because yeah I I come with a solution the person is just gonna dissect it. <clears throat> it's no way you can work. I say yeah but it's okay to understand you need to understand what somebody's gonna do to you. Well at first it's, I'm not gonna do anything to you as a client you are just working on yourself I get you a tool and the same is for a joke if I would give you the explanation up front and then tell you the joke you would not be laughing the joke would not work it would not be funny if I explain to you how a magic trick works and then I take you to Las Vegas because I think that's the only place where you can still find a magician in those days, I mean, a good one having a huge trick, you would not be amazed. You'd be looking at, ah, oh, yeah, and that's when he does this and he does that. But you would not be enjoying the magic. And when it comes to work regarding this, what's in here, to emotions, to feelings, it is like magic. It is not about understanding and dissecting and wanting to know every piece and bit how it works. Most of you step into a car and start driving and really do not know how the car works. Most of you step into an airplane and have no clue how that huge thing of tens or hundreds of tons is coming off the ground. Yeah, there are engines and trust. Okay, build me one. Build me a small one that will actually fly. Get off the ground, just get off the ground. No way you would manage to do that. Because you would need to really understand how aerodynamics work and how a jet engine works or actually a bypass, maybe geared engine, geared up or geared down engine. You see already it sounds complicated. Yeah, I know some things about this because I love aviation. But the more I understand about aviation, the less magical it is. So for me, flying, it's not magical anymore because I understand too much about it. I enjoy the feeling, but as soon as I start thinking and dissecting, I cannot feel anymore because I'm completely here and I cannot, the feelings have no space. So what's happening when a person who's so much into an analyzing everything is that as soon as there is a solution coming to the person, the mind is getting in between. The soul, the heart, the inner child, the person, and the solution. And I go, oh, wait, wait, I can deal with it. Shit. I can deal with it. Oh, let me examine it. This solution. I start cutting it in small pieces and you have a mountain of dust. Because if you keep dissecting things, you end up with only atoms. Or maybe you can go even smaller and you dissect the atoms. And at the end, it's just a mountain of dust. Of basic elements which at the end there are two, three, or maybe if you keep dissecting you end up having one element only. But it's the way how you put the things together that makes it work. And even when it comes to matter we know a lot but we cannot predict where an electron will be. We cannot predict so many things 
we, so we actually do not know for a fact exactly how the matter is and will be reacting and that's why the universe is so beautiful because we can just observe and enjoy and feel and let it affect us instead of only being busy with dissecting everything when I look at the painting for example I look at this painting you can look at it you can like it or not I love it you ask me, why can you explain to me in detail I I will go a certain level of detail the colors I love the combination of colors and I love these specific colors orange this kind of blue yellow red for me they're warm colors even this blue it's cool but it's not not cold and the combination I just love it but if I would go and dissect this painting and start cutting it in small pieces and take out every every drop of paint and stuff I would end up having a mountain of dust in front of me and nothing to put on the wall so yeah looking at the mountain of dust yeah now I understand how this painting is what it actually is it's a mountain of dust maybe it didn't cut too small so I still have some blue dust some orange dust some yellow some black some red and uh, from the back white and uh, the wood so I would have different colors of dust I would look at it. it would not be so fun to look at it and there's no way I can put it back together so there's no way that mountain of dust will be a beautiful painting that I can put on the wall again so when a solution comes for an emotional pain or maybe for these people it's an emotional dysfunction and if you dissect in small pieces it's gone the whole effect is gone so over analyzing definitely not and why are these people doing this you may ask <coughs> well it's the need to understand and it's the fear of the unknown is the not trusting what they cannot understand and this is also how a lot of people do not believe in things they cannot dissect they cannot understand so I do not understand how it would be possible for somebody to realign somebody's spine without touching the person just standing in front of the person and focusing on the person I cannot understand yeah maybe he's sending some vibrations but no no, no we don't, we're not telepathic no we cannot do that no it's not possible no I don't believe it, it doesn't work yeah placebo effect which is a funny one what is placebo effect it's when the person believes that something would work for the person so actually you admitting by saying placebo effect that by just believing I can repair myself which on the other hand you will tell scientifically impossible because to repair to put vertebrates back in, shape, in place you need to push them because it's physically here so you need to put it back here so you need to push here and push there so so <laughs> you're even contradicting yourself you're screaming on one hand is this on the other hand ah it's impossible because you do not understand and you do not trust what you do not understand we do not need to understand everything what we actually want all of us is to be happy we simply want to be happy and it shouldn't matter how how to get to the happiness for some people it's laying on the beach for some people it's being in the mountains for some people it's being on a snow mountain to be able to ski for some people it's being in the forest for other people it's being in a very beautiful building for other people it's being surrounded with other people for other people it's being surrounded with animals 
and you can try to scientifically explain each of them but hey these people are already very different so there is not one formula that will explain all of it <coughs> because it's not just chemical it's not just science the way we know it science through the mind and even if there may be a science the science is so big that it was able to create us so we want to really understand how we are functioning it's like I don't know I believe there are limits to what you can understand because to create a certain machine you need another machine for example so you need an enormous factory to build one car and the car is much smaller than the factory so you need much more technology to be able to build a relatively simple technology which is the car so you need an enormous intelligence to be able to build our intelligence you see where I'm going so and I'm sure some of you are already coming up with a thousand arguments now against what I'm saying bottom line is you will never be able to scientifically dissect and understand and after that heal your emotions so for a person like me I'm not gonna try even to cross that bridge because for me it's a very unstable bridge it's a bridge where I cannot do my thing I cannot work in my own way and a lot of people cannot deal with this as well so these people are also often quite isolated they do not have too many friends because not everyone is enjoying this over analyzing being sometimes you just want to enjoy something you don't want the person to come and just dissect the whole thing pleasure is gone ah oh, this is a very nice birthday cake ah oh, this is farina with uh, with this and flour and, uh, 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 and all the... I don't care it tastes good yeah but did you know it's made like this and uh, actually this part is poison and this thing could also be doing this and this would have an effect on that I don't care I am enjoying a nice piece of pie so please shut the fuck up let me enjoy the taste I don't care what's all behind it I appreciate and I'm grateful to all the people who got involved and all the plants and animals who got involved in creating this but now I'm enjoying the taste of this piece and I'm eating it that feels so good and for me to feel good enjoying this I don't want to be thinking about how this was created and how it will be processed in my stomach with acid and later getting to the bowels and becoming a very smelly thing and then yeah you know the rest you probably now already did this like, ah oh, no please stop there please stop there I just was enjoying already this piece of cake you were talking about and, and, and now I'm like no of course because this is exactly what's happening when you over dissect everything and over analyze everything and when you come across people like this the only thing you can do is send them love and let them be and it's okay to say to someone hey please stop I cannot follow your reasoning I don't feel the need for it I just want to enjoy this thing or simply to dislike this thing that's enough I do not have the need to understand everything I want the car to be part of front of my place and for you to give me the key and then I can use the car to go to the airport or to the mountains I don't need you to dissect it for me because I cannot do anything with a pile of pieces
So I hope this video was somehow educative. Um, I'm quite sure that you recognize a lot of situations now and that yeah, there's a high chance now it will make more sense to you. I was dissecting a little bit this video, dissecting the dissectors or what it means to dissect. But I hope that this, this is helping you and if you are one of those dissectors, I hope this is helping you to become a little bit aware of where your trap is, where your mind is overstepping his boundaries. I often say the mind is a wonderful tool, but it's a tool. It's not supposed to lead your life. It's like when you have a GPS, the GPS is not going to tell you which restaurant you should go to. And then you'll discover, oh, you sent me to Japanese restaurant. I don't like Japanese food. I don't like fish. Definitely not raw fish. Uh, damn it. No, you decide. I'm in the mood for nice piece of meat, a good steak, or nice vegetarian food. So, okay, this means then you go on the website and you, have, you find, <clears throat> the computer will find for you the right restaurant because you say, I want vegetarian, for example, or meat. It will give you a list and you choose. And then you say to your GPS, get me there. And then the GPS, the mind will, okay, I can get you there. You go like this and you arrive and you enjoy what you want didn't come from here, it came from here, the decision making. And then this one got you there. It's literally like, I'm in the mood to watch a movie. It's not coming from here, it's coming from here. I'm in the mood for a nice movie. And then the mind is saying, okay, we can uh, set up the, uh, the computer or we can go to the, to the cinema. That's what the mind does. But you feel first an emotion, I want to enjoy this thing or I want to enjoy a nice piece of pie well the mind says you could bake one it's a lot of work I would feel like am I in the mood for that no this hour no okay you could walk to this bakery over there it's gonna take you 45 minutes to walk forth and back and they have good stuff okay was the mind remembering that we saw one day a big reader. Or you could go to this tea house over there. It will take you half an hour to get there. But there you can relax and sit and enjoy the pie on the spot. And they also have some nice tea and it's a nice environment. So that's what the mind does. But it starts with here with the feeling. I'm in the mood for something. Please try to, to start from here, let this be your starting point and this your tool to get to where you want. And allow this also to rest from time to time. It also needs rest. The more you put it to work, a certain moment you will get tired, you will start to make mistakes or come up with stuff you're not in the mood for. So give this rest and let this express because this doesn't, doesn't cost your soul energy to just express what you want. A painting like this doesn't come from here, it comes from here. I wish you a wonderful day.